Hey, I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. I'm here on the set of The Big Bang Theory, and I'm sitting in Sheldon's spot, which means I automatically have one strike against me. Eeks! This is Bill Prady, the co-creator of The Big Bang, and uh, you know this is one of my favorite shows on TV. Uh, but I keep having this conversation with viewers of mine who won't give it a try because they think that it's uh, stereotyping geeks. But you don't do that. I don't think we do. I, you know, no. the, the the characters in the show are are based, you know, to a large extent mm -hmm. on. on uh, people I knew when I was in the computer business. I was, I you were a programmer. I was a computer programmer. Um, but the, initially they were, and and now I think they're based on um, the writers in the writers room, who are hmm. sort of the geekiest collection of human beings <laughs> assembling daily in Southern California. I gotta say, I love the writers. Well, uh, we uh, they are a lovely group of people. <laughs> you know, the, all of the you know the passions that the guys have and the knowledge the guys have and stuff come comes from us. That you know, yeah. they like Star Trek because we like Star Trek and. And they were obsessed with uh, Battlestar Galactica because we've been <laughs> obsessed with Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. And how about that finale, right? I uh, didn't see it. Oh, 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 yeah, I <laughs> well, I, it? I haven't actually watched the show in, in general. Oh, my God. I know, I know. I'm, oh I'm so in trouble with my viewers. All right. Well, forget forget issues with Big Bang. Why have you not been watching <laughs> Battlestar? <laughs> I, you know, I just I oh, never got into awesome. it. I know, I know. Okay. I need to get the DVDs and kind of go and back to, into it. You have to it. start from the miniseries. You have to go all the way okay. back and start from the miniseries. I promise. Okay. All right. We've I settled promise. that. We have settled that <laughs> issue. <laughs> but, you know, one of the, the, the things that I keep trying to tell people is how you don't stereotype. Like, um, with Revenge of the Nerds, it was very much, here, this is what nerds are like. But with Big Bang, it, it's very much, these are four scientists, and it's about them specifically, not you know, scientists in general or... But there are a couple of things. One is, is, that, is that, you know, sort of living in this world, one of the things that I was very aware of is there's a non-judgmental aspect. Mm. You know, um, in the science world. Well, in the in the sort of in the nerd world. Okay. I mean, you know, and I think back that um, when I was a programmer, there was there were a lot of different flavors of people that that worked with us, and there was a guy who couldn't go someplace by himself that he'd never been before, and as opposed to sort of screaming and saying, "But why can't you just go there?" It was just sort of like, "Well, no, no, you can't ask him. He can't go there because he's never been there before." Hmm. And it was an acceptance of people's idiosyncrasies and a celebration of difference as opposed to an exploitation of difference. I really like how you say that. That's... Yeah, so, so that's, that's what we've tried to bring here. And we love our characters very mm -hmm. much. And I get the sense that all the actors really like each other as actors as well as characters. They do. It, it's it's freaky how much the cast <laughs> likes each, how much they like each other and how much they hang out. And Is that not normal? Uh, it really isn't hmm. normal. It, it, it isn't. And I, I remember uh, last year when we went down to Comic Con, um, and the cast uh, we, we got we got together for dinner, and the cast said that they'd all gone out. They'd rented a boat down in San Diego, oh, yeah? and they'd all gone out together on this boat, and they had pictures. And Chuck Lorre and I were thinking, oh my God, our whole cast together <laughs> out on a boat somewhere. You know, what a That's kind of scary, no, isn't it? Really scary. It's kind of like your whole future is on yeah. a small piece of wood somewhere. <laughs> but they they really like each other, and you know, we had an, there's an interesting history to the show because we did the pilot twice. We did it we did it once, and it wasn't. It didn't come out quite okay. right, and CBS gave us a do-over on the pilot. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen that much at all. Yeah. And um, and Johnny and Jim were the two cast members who mm -hmm. were in the original pilot and also in the pilot we ultimately shot that okay. became the show. So they had this year of where it was clear, hey, I think we're going to do this again and stuff like that. So they hang, hung out and became friends. Oh, nice. So by the time we got to doing the second pilot, these were two guys who've known each other now for a year and were good friends. And when the other people came in, there was it, it just became this this sort of sense of camaraderie that spread. And That's really it was cool. Awesome. You uh, used the word nerd earlier. Do you think of them as geeks, nerds, or just plain scientists? It, you, know, it's you... you know, it's really hard because I, I've been reading I've been reading about you know people's theories of uses of the words and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So nerd has a very ambiguous etymology. Geek, do you know the etymology of geek? Yes. It was yes. a job. Geek was a job that you could have. Oh well. It was the, a performer. 
the, who bit uh, the heads, the heads, off, heads chicken. off chickens. Yes, that's right. That's yes. That, that was a job. So you could you could. I don't think I knew that it was a job, but no, I knew a, that no, somebody. It was, it was it was a circus. It was a circus side, circus side, side okay. job. So you might be you know there's the bearded lady and then there's the geek. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't just biting the heads off chickens. It was doing odd, extreme things. Okay. And. So I think it became, you know, it's one of those words that survives only as a metaphor that doesn't survive in sure. its, because people, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I'm thinking about geek and, you know, and you have to raise chickens. It's very hard. <laughs> but, um, but so, you know, I wonder about, you know, those words and, you know, what the connotations are. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you start, when you're in a conversation, you want to say people like that. Or people, I you know, some people like me and, and things right. like that. What what's the word you use? So I mean, you know, your podcast has has that name. So. Well, yeah, we we title it Geek, and right. I call myself a geek, and it's been interesting. Even when I was a kid, um, the word geek or to be a geek wasn't very popular. You know, it right. wasn't a, an okay thing, and that's totally changing now. Geek is really all about being passionate about whatever it is you're passionate about. You can be a film geek, you can be a music geek, you can be you know whatever kind of geek. I'm a tech geek. And I'm seeing that word kind of change. I haven't seen nerd really change. It kind of seems to still have the nerd same stigma. Still, nerd is still you get thrown into your locker and yeah, and, and yeah, stuff exactly. Like that. It, it still has that, it, you know. Except, but but there's also, I mean, you know, as we move into you know what is clearly a nerdocratic society. I mm -hmm. mean, you you know, you look at the you know the the result of the information age, which we clearly live in, is that people who are skilled at manipulating information. Yeah. Or the technology that manipulates information become, you know, become the ruling class. You totally. Know, why it's this is why it's you know Bill Gates and Steve Jobs world and we just live in it. So. Yeah, you know, it was it was funny because I. I'm really realizing that people are accepting people being geeks. Um, I was on the set of a morning show the other day. I was doing an interview. He said, "Well, it's it's good that people are geeks now." And coming from just a, a morning show reporter, I was shocked <laughs> to hear that come out of his mouth because I, I never really got that feeling that uh, uh, people um, in in the industry kind of accept geeks. Well, so. you know, it's interesting because the, you know, the essence of what we do on the show, the the, the underlying uh, underlying theme of the show, mm -hmm. is everybody is an outsider. But everybody is. Everybody is, absolutely. Everybody, is. everybody has the feeling that somebody else, someone they know, has things better understood, more together, yeah. it gets it better, knows how to move through the world better, understands things better than they do. Mm -hmm. But the math of it is, you know, ev there's no, logically then there's no person who truly gets it. Totally. But we all walk around feeling, gee, if I only understood it like he does, mm -hmm. like she does, if I could only move through the world that way. And when we started, you know, the shows, what if you were as bright, what, what if you were axiomatically intelligent, the, you know, the yeah. most intelligent person, um, and, and still, you know, you couldn't find your way through the world. Still you know, have issues, is and, like everybody does. There's an interesting thing, which is that, you know, if you think about it, Intelligence gives you no advantage socially. It gives you an advantage in, Absolutely. in working a crossword mm -hmm. puzzle. But being particularly bright doesn't give you any advantage it romantically, sets you back. socially. It might set you back yeah. and things. And it's very frustrating because you think you, if you're bright, you think it ought to. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand because you know, I can I can read a map faster than other <laughs> right. people. So how come I can't negotiate this party better than other people? Yeah. And it's, you know. There's a certain dynamic to yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah, so that's a big theme that we talk about. A lot of people think that I would um, relate better to Penny because I do the show, I'm outgoing, but in reality, I relate more to uh, Leonard because as a kid, that's who I was, you know, I was, or all of them, I, I have parts of me in, in all of them, but you know, I was, I was the shy kid that, uh, that hung out with the smart kids, and I, I couldn't navigate my way around, you know. So, uh, what what do you? Who do you most relate to? Or well, it's, it's, do you feel that way? No, it's it's interesting because you know I I relate to all the characters very much, and <coughs> and I you know I you know all of us who write the show find our own path into the show because you, you, you have to find so that you can write the characters, you have to find a connection to the characters. 
for me, um, the connection is always very is is very easy. There's, um, you know, the, the the part of me that you know says, "Gee, I could participate more in the world." The part of me that says, "Gee, I wish I could be one of those people who just goes to parties and has a great right. time and all that." And that's Leonard, and he just Leonard desperately wants. He wants to be normal. He wants to be yeah. He wants that that better connection to the world. And then and there's Sheldon who's given it up. Who's, mm -hmm. Who said there's just no point. Everything's fine. And and that's you know and that's a huge part of me the part that says you know what I've I've you know I've got I've got some pizza I've got Battlestar <laughs> queued up on the yeah. TiVo I'm good to go and and that's fine and and there are times there are times where there's a little wall of what's going on where you say you know what I I, I got it hooked up you know <laughs> I got it I know what I'm doing I know how to handle the situation and, um, and you know a lot of wall it's there there are a couple of influences. From uh, for Wallowitz, one is is that during the period of time I was a programmer, I had a girlfriend, okay. and a lot of the guys in my group didn't. So I was, you know, so I yeah, was okay. head and shoulders above them. Even though she was a girlfriend from high school, who became my girlfriend when she walked up to me and said, "I'm your girlfriend." <laughs> so, you know, That's awesome. So, so it really didn't reflect any great social skill on my part. And how long did that last? A uh, few years. Oh, nice. You know, so, <laughs> and we moved to New York together, and it lasted for a while. And, and then there was also another guy that I worked with, and he was amazingly successful with women, and he was forever bringing different women around and stuff like that. And he explained that he had he had two rules for being successful with women, and they were proposition every woman and have no standards. Nice. <laughs> and, and so there's a lot of that going on in Wallowitz. And then and then Kuthur Polly is is just that is just you know we we worked with a guy who couldn't speak to women. Yeah. Just who, who actually had selective mutism, and women would walk in the room, and he'd be talking, and a woman would come in. And he was dying. And it was fascinating. And we would, I mean, we would do things. We would literally, you know, hide a woman and have her step out into the room. And, and oh. it wasn't quite as extreme, you know, as Raj will just shut up. But he, he would just, uh, just uh, <laughs> and obviously, you realize just he had stopped talking. Yeah. And. I think that's such an endearing character. It's yeah, he's he's wonderful, and he represents the extreme beyond Sheldon of a, mm -hmm. of a withdrawal. Yeah. That's that's more. It's it's more than by choice. It's by it's by pathology. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you know, and and at the you know at the same time, I think the reason that people really like these guys, and the reason Penny likes these guys, is there's uh, there's an inherent honesty. Sure. To them, they you know whether you know Sheldon's is a blunt honesty, <laughs> you know that that he will he will simply say what he thinks. And, I love that about him. And yeah. Leonard's Le Leonard is without guile. Mm -hmm. He's he's honest because he doesn't know you're not supposed to be honest yeah. in situations. Now you guys, if you haven't seen it, I, I really encourage you to. And if you follow me on Twitter, then you've probably seen my tweets about this particular situation. A couple weeks ago, you had Sheldon sitting here. Um, he was refusing to touch the sticker inside the TiVo box. Yes. Um, and I, are you on Twitter? I'm not on Twitter. Oh, you've got to get on Twitter. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm on Facebook, but I'm, I haven't okay. on Twitter. But I'm on Facebook, and I apologize. Ahead of time, I can't befriend anybody I don't know because my <laughs> Facebook got completely out of control. Aww. So I'm sorry, and I'm I'm speaking to you personally. <laughs> They'll <laughs> understand. <laughs> but I, if I'm going to watch Battlestar, then then you've got to get on Twitter. Okay, we're will, making this deal. But it will be the, they will be the most they will be the most boring tweets in the world. That's will, what I will, thought about mine. No, it's going to be. Um, it's going to be Bill is stuck in the writer's room and is so excited that he <laughs> thinks he heard lunch. That's, that, will be, that will be the tweet every day at 12.15. So, <laughs> well, there people you go. love behind the scenes type okay, of stuff. It'll be, that, it'll be that behind the scenes. There you go. So I, you I talk, tweeted. You were talking about um, Sheldon and the TiVo box? Yeah, so I tweeted immediately after I saw that and I, I said, Foul! Sheldon wouldn't be afraid of, of uh, voiding the warranty. And oh, then yeah. and, and then I, I got a lot of tweets back, and that's what I love about Twitter is the, is the conversation. And I, I, then I tweeted, Okay, yes, you know, you're right. Sheldon's a very do it by the rules kind of right. guy. And so I was correct. I stood corrected on that. But regardless of whether he would or wouldn't have, have avoided the warranty, the fact that you you put that joke in, you know, about the sticker inside the TiVo box that would void the warranty, 
you don't see that elsewhere on, t uh, on TV. And, and you guys don't dumb it down, which is, is well, what well, I really well, like. We, these are the conversations, I mean, and to a great extent, these are, these are conversations that we have. We were, yeah. you know, I, you know, we, every now and then we'll, ha we'll have a conversation in the writer's room and either, you know, with thought, somebody say, oh my God, write that down because yeah. that's, that's a conversation for the guys or, you know, or the writer's assistant will surreptitiously note it or, or something like that. But no, there are a lot of conversations in the writer's room about, about, um, uh, upgrading TiVo boxes and and because I've upgraded the TiVo boxes in my yes, house and the, of course. The, you know and a discussion with another person in the room and I said listen I'll I'll come over and I'll come over and do yours it's really easy and there was a whole thing about <laughs> well no the warranty and and blah 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 and, and all of that and we said well yeah that's what these guys talk about they absolutely I mean they play games they argue about um, you know the great thing, the great wonderful nerd argument is 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 the argument that it, that where the given is dispensed with immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, oh, yeah. you know. Sheldon's uh, no, no, no. Let's assume men can fly in his, yeah. his Superman <laughs> argument, which is an argument I've been having for years, and it and it it, it owes a debt to a great um, piece by Harlan El. I think it's Har it's either Harlan Ellison or Larry Niven, called "Man of Steel, Woman of Kleenex." You can Google it. Okay. I think, as I don't remember, um, <laughs> um, but it talks about the the paradoxes of Superman, and 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 I think it deals specifically with with issues of sexuality between a hypothetical Superman and a hypothetical Lois okay. Lane. You know that kind of argument, which became Sheldon's you know discussion about mm -hmm. trisecting Lois, if, yeah, if, yeah, and all of that. Um, these are these are the conversations we have. You know, it's interesting because you know people talk about you know what's it like in the writers' room. This show is a great glimpse into the writers' room because the arguments that these guys have, the issues that they're having, and the yes. and and you know when we're passionate about a game, they're passionate about a game. When we get tired of a game, <laughs> they get tired of a game. So it's very parallel. It's very parallel. Okay. Yeah. Well, before we wrap it up, um, you I did the, you did one season um, uh, produced on my favorite show of all time, Gilmore Girls. I did do a season on, yes. on, on Gilmore Girls. I, I just had to bring that up because Gilmore Girls was a huge inspiration for how we formatted Geek Brief. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not doing it here, but I talk really fast on, on a oh, regular talk, episode okay. of Geek Brief. Right. And you talk really fast and in really long camera shots that take you that take you through a Connecticut town. No, <laughs> I don't do that part. Okay. <laughs> just the really you know talking fast. Uh, always heard how Amy would would tell um, the actors, you okay, talk, that's yeah. good, but it can be talk, faster. Yeah, talk faster. You know, Gilmore Girls scripts were 20 pages longer than oh wow 20 pages longer yeah okay. than regular one hour scripts mm -hmm. um, because the the dialogue was delivered so fast yeah. so quickly well I uh, just had to say thank you for working on that because I, you know what it was you know I I, I, it, it, I passed through that experience <laughs> and I you know I was always a Gilmore fan yeah. it was interesting to participate in it for a year um, <laughs> and I'm I'm very happy to be where I am now <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I'm 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 thrilled to be here on the set. You guys, I hope you have a better understanding of why I keep tweeting about Big Bang Theory and uh, why I love it so much. Uh, if you haven't given it a try, absolutely watch it. Um, and what nights? Monday uh, nights. Monday nights at eight o'clock on CBS. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bill. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for for visiting our home. Of course. And <laughs> I, I better get out of this chair yes, before Sheldon comes in and sees me. <laughs> Absolutely. He's on his, he's he's on on his, his way. way in, so uh -oh, I'd time. Leave if I were here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much.